Okay, in this lecture, I'm going to go back and talk a little bit more about TCP and um, UDP protocols. So, we've already talked about this a little, and we've already talked about the packet formats for both a TCP packet and a UDP packet in a previous lecture. So, it's important to remember that TCP and UDP are the two major protocols at layer 4 of uh, the OSI model. And then if we talk about um, TCP IP, uh, you know, we have the, the network layer, the network, um, the IP layer, the inter-networking layer, the transport layer, and uh, the application layer are the four layers of that. So TCP slash IP are just combining the two major protocols at those two uh, middle layers. Kind of the rationale behind that is the physical layer has to be there for the network to work. And the application layer is of interest to people developing applications. So if you're a network person in the TCP IP model, those are the two protocols or two layers that you're most um, interested in. Um, talking about these at a high level, uh, TCP is connection-based and UDP is not its best effort delivery. TCP is guaranteed delivery. We'll see a list of this in a moment. Um, the other thing we need to talk about at um, layer 4 is ports. Ports are endpoints of communications is kind of the best thing or the best way I can describe that. Um, they keep track of conversations between a client and a server. Um, we have source ports, which is where the communication is coming from those are randomly generated destination ports are fixed and if they're below 1024 they're referred to as well-known ports and in a previous lecture we went over things like what port does SMTP run on it's port 25 what port does SSH run on that's port 22 um, etc so that's to keep track of the uh, communications, again, uh, between two programs that are running on the network. So what does UDP do? Each layer of the OSI model receives data from the layer above, if we're talking about the sending machine, does something to that data, and then passes it down to the lower level. Uh, so it receives um, UDP's layer 4, so it receives data from layer 5. It encapsulates that data into the data field of a UDP packet, and then it passes that UDP packet down to layer 3 uh, to be transmitted. Uh, I don't recall talking about it, but I'll talk about it here. We're talking about going down through the OSI model. That's encapsulation. Um, on the receiving end, as it goes from lower levels or lower layers to higher layers, it does decapsulization, which is stripping off the header and possibly trailer of the whatever the um, PDU is throws those away and looks at the data inside. So as we're going down, we're encapsulating, adding headers and possibly trailers. When we're going up from lower layers to higher layers, we're decapsulizing that data, which is stripping headers and possibly trailers off of uh, the packet or frame. So what does UP, UDP not do? Well, it doesn't establish a connection. There's no permanent connection for communications. It just packages the data up and sends it. Uh, there's no mechanism to do acknowledgments. Uh, it does not provide any guarantee that the data will arrive. Uh, 
it has no mechanism to detect lost uh, messages and have them retransmitted and it does not ensure the data arrives in order so what we mean there is if we send packets one two three four five six uh, they may show up one three two five four six so the packets may all arrive but they may be out of order and there is no flow control or any mechanism to deal with uh, congestion in the network so what does TCP do? It receives data from layer 5. It encapsulates it into the data field of a TCP packet. It sends the, that should say, TCP packet to layer 3. It is connection based. Uh, so it does establish a connection that it keeps open during the communications. It has reliable guaranteed delivery. There is a mechanism that we discussed with um, acknowledgments of data transmission and timers to make sure that all packets are transmitted and it does manage the the flow of data. So it's more like I said guaranteed in order uh, delivery of packets. Uh, going back and talking about ports both TCP and UDP have ports. Um, they're used basically for application identification. So if we connect to port 80, for example, we know that the application is a web server if we're using well-known ports. Um, those well-known ports or common ports were covered in the client-server lecture that I've already uh, done. As far as connections, we talked about a three-way handshake in the more network layer info. And just to refresh your, your memory, that is we use uh, synchronized messages and acknowledgments uh, to make sure that the, the packets arrive in order and intact and that all packets arrive. So that's just a little bit more information about TCP and UDP.